Advanced Accounting 3 Business Acquisitions. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email, and our phone number. The information from this course was taken from Advanced, the Advanced Accounting text from McGraw-Hill. And a related video to these topics is consolidating Consolidation 1 about business consolidation. Our first slide is called buying rather than creating. You may have heard that uh, companies either grow or perish. And the question is, well, why does a company need to grow in the first place? And it might be survival. For example, um, only one of two or three large producers is going to survive in a certain industry. So the idea is that you either have to grow, and growth might mean buying out some of your competitors, or you're going to be too small and you're going to die because you won't be able to compete on a cost basis with the competition. So that's why I put kill or be killed in parentheses. The other is profitability. We're going to find out that one way to be more profitable is to grow. And there's a couple of reasons why that might occur. So we've got a choice. We're going to grow. We can create the additional business on our own or we can go out and buy it from somebody else and that's why we have the second bullet point growth and the fastest path to growth is to buy an entity that is already producing the product or service that you're interested in so if you're Levi's jeans and you want to go into the uh, toddler jean market and there's a company called Hollywood jeans that already is in that business buying a competitor is a much faster way to enter that market than trying to do it yourself. So what are the benefits? Economies of scale. If you're a larger company and you're Levi's, maybe you can demand a lower price for denim from suppliers because you're buying more. Maybe if you're Levi's and you're manufacturing jeans with the additional company, you can use your physical assets more. You can use your machinery 18 hours a day instead of 12. You have the entire use of a building rather than just 80% of it. The second benefit is more stable earnings because you're diversified. You're less dependent on genes that you sell to adults because now you're in a market where you're selling genes to a different age group, toddler. So it could be that you're less dependent on one type of product or service. And the last bullet point, the new product on the shelf, in this case, making genes for infants allows for earning potential. Maybe the business that you're buying, Hollywood Jeans, has a higher rate of earnings for every dollar sold than your business does right now. So maybe it's just more profitable. The business that you're buying or creating is just more profitable. We mentioned subsidiary in the Consolidation 1 video that I mentioned a few minutes ago. Now we let's define it. A corporation controlled by another corporation is a subsidiary, and specifically, a subs control means that the other company owns the majority of the subsidiary's common stock. But if we're going to have a parent subsidiary or multiple subsidiaries, from a financial statement perspective, we need to understand the big picture, which is the second bullet point. We need to review the consolidated entity which means, as we found out in Consolidation 1, we need to look at all the subsidiary activity together as if it were one company. And the reason for that is the transactions between the subs, the subsidiaries, are eliminated in consolidation. The reason that's important is, is that if we look at the subsidiaries as if they're all one company, it eliminates the temptation to manipulate the financials by hiding activity in one subsidiary and not showing it in other subsidiaries. Because you can't hide every, anything because all the subsidiary activity is eliminated. And we only look at the company as a whole. So as I said, you can buy an entity, but what if we're going to create an entity? For example, Levi's creates a brand new entity that didn't exist in for Hollywood jeans for the infant and small child market. Levi is going to own a majority of the stock in Hollywood jeans. 
And the Star Hollywood genes, they're going to fund the new entity. And what that means is they're going to transfer assets into the new entity. The assets might include inventory, uh, maybe work in process, partially manufactured genes, equipment, sewing machines to make the genes, a building to do the work in. And not only do we transfer in assets, but we might also transfer in related liabilities. For example, if we transfer a truck into the organization, into the new entity, maybe there's a note payable associated with that truck that we would also transfer. What value do we transfer the assets and liabilities at? At the book value, the carrying amount that is on the books for Levi's jeans. So what does Levi's get out of this? Well, what they get is an investment. And on Levi's books, as we have in parentheses here, you're going to see an account that says something like investment in Hollywood jeans. It's going to be investment, just like an investment in bonds, just like in any other sort of investment. And the value on Levi's books will be the net assets transferred, which is assets minus liabilities. Any other financial impact? You'll notice on the prior slide that we didn't talk about the fair value of assets transferred. That's not you. As a result, there is no gain lost because FMV, the fair market value less the carrying value, would normally be how we calculate gain loss. That doesn't apply here because we're only using carrying value. The reason that we don't, as we say in italics, is it's not an arm's length transaction. In other words, these are not two independent entities operating strictly for their own benefit. They're related parties. They're related parties. There is an exception to the gain loss rule, and that's impairment. We define impairment as the value of the asset is reduced because it's no longer as useful. And the best example is hardware or software that becomes completely outdated due to technological in increases. So if you have a piece of software that you have on the books at $50,000 and new technology comes out that makes it less useful or, or close to obsolete, you're going to put a new carrying value on that asset. And it may be that the fair market value of the asset is much less than the carrying value. And if it is, we recognize a loss. And to correct myself, we're not going to change the carrying value, but we are going to recognize a loss if the fair market value of the software, in my example, is less than the carrying value, the value of the asset that you have on your books. And finally, what about valuation? How much do we pay for an asset? Very generally, two ways here. First of all, Think about a home appraisal when you're getting a home loan. Somebody comes by and values the home. We can also do an appraisal of the assets and liabilities that we transfer into Hollywood Jeans. A better way might be the second bullet point, because you can think about a company as a money machine. If you can picture turning the crank on a machine, that machine is going to generate a certain amount of cash each year. And what you are paying for is you're paying for a certain amount of cash or earnings, either one, that's generated each year. So there's two ways that we can value the company using this method. We can pay based on a multiple of their earnings, five times earnings, ten times earnings. We, you may prefer to price earnings ratio in the investment business. Another way we can do it is, as the, we've seen before, the present value of the future cash flows. Let's take those future cash flows the company's cranking out and let's value them in today's dollars. And if you look at our capital budgeting videos, you'll see more of a discussion on that. So we have appraisal, and then we have other methods for valuing the company. That's the end of Advanced Accounting 3. We have longer courses, hour-long courses, using GoToMeeting you can find out about. Here's our YouTube channel. You can register for individual tutoring, tutoring and one-on-one -on -one live chat. We're also on Skype. Thanks very much, and we will see you next time.